Alright, welcome or welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is the second devlog for my Pool Rooms inspired map, and we have a lot to cover today, so I think we should just hop right into it here. So what I think I'm going to do here is just show some comparison shots of how the map looked in the last devlog versus how it looks now. I'm going to have some panning shots as well in here, uh, and just show you how much it's changed, because everything from lighting to models to textures, it's all completely different now. Uh, the map's basically been rebuilt from the ground up, uh, so from here on out you're going to see a lot more updates. There's going to be a lot more actual content to the map aside from just eye candy. And yeah, it's going to be more exciting overall. Before I get into showing you the specifics, uh, just a quick heads up. In between devlogs, I'm going to start making YouTube shorts with little teasers. Uh, so that way you do get a little bit of content in between related to pool rooms. Uh, and then devlogs will probably be like every month or every two months, something like that. Okay, so there's two things that I want to point out uh, from the last devlog that didn't quite make it into this version either. Uh, so the first one, I had this whole sewer system, right? And it used to have an uh, exit over there. So it would kind of lead you into the pool rooms. You had some kind of puzzle, some action elements in it. Uh, but it was quite rough. And what I've been doing right is I've been kind of polishing the whole look of the map. I've been trying to make everything just really solid. And I didn't want to have to make the whole mega pool here, plus everything else going in it, plus the sewers before releasing it. So instead I'm going to make the sewers just really fleshed out, uh, but in an update after this map comes out. So you're going to get the map sooner, and you'll also get a higher quality version of the sewers, if that makes sense. And then the second thing that didn't quite make the cut that I was talking about before is uh, diving boards, right? Now I'm planning to have diving boards over here, uh, kind of by the yellow and pink slide. And what I'm basically doing is before I make diving boards, I'm going to make a sort of modular support system. So I can make supports for the slides, supports for the diving boards, and also kind of make the diving boards into a sort of uh, physics puzzle, if you will. So you'll have to uh, sort of unfold parts of the diving boards, you'll have to use different tools or gadgets to lock stuff into place. Well, see, that's the idea. I don't want it to be annoying, right? Because sometimes you just want to hop in a map and you want to do sandbox stuff. But I also want there to be a sort of level of reward and interactivity with the features in the map. So I'll try and find a balance between that. Um, but yeah, so diving boards are coming, but just a little bit later on here, right? All right, and while we're on the topic of features from the last devlog, uh, zip lines are a big one. So I kind of had a system before where the zip lines came around and I had these pillars supporting them and I was like hmm it's kind of breaking up the room too much I want there to be this open space in the middle right and so what I've done is I've gone for a new design where it's all these kind of big wall mounted pieces of hardware it's curved kind of like pool railings like I'm trying to keep that theme there still and another big change is I'm actually using the correct zipline tech from the SDK and what this lets you do is go just about as fast as you want. This zip line can pull you crazy fast and your arms won't glitch out like the last one. And while we're talking about that, uh, you might have noticed this giant hole here. So one way to help people get around the room easier is down there is going to be a little pulley handle and you hold on to it and it's gonna use similar tech to the zip line in a way. It's gonna pull you up to the top here. So you're going to be able to move around vertically and laterally quite fast, as well as around the edge of the map. And then as for this platform here, uh, my plans for this is to kind of have some fold-out activities inside of the platform. So let me see if I can get you a good view of the outside. Yeah. So I might make some slots in here, and when the activities are inside, they'll be flush. And it'll be things like, uh, for instance, a big sumo arena. Uh, kind of like the Wii Sports Resort duels. It'll kind of slide out and over the water, and then you'll have physical levers or buttons or whatnot to toggle these different activities. So I've still got to kind of figure out what those will be, but I want them to be these flush things and then some sort of control panel up here. So moving on to the next thing, I've actually done a whole bunch of work on the slides to make it so that there's a water texture that slides along them. 
as well as improving the layout of some. Some were fairly boring before, they're a lot better now. Others are still a bit slow, but uh, I'm going to try and add some sort of boost mechanic to them, but I'll just demonstrate. This water looks quite nice when you're uh, going down the slide. And this is the perfect transition because another thing I've been working on is underwater effects. So we have all these bubbles and god rays underneath the water now. And if we swim up to the top here, you'll see you can kind of tell that you're under the water. So you're not relying on the fog being so thick that you go, well, yeah, I'm, I need to swim up higher. And I've also got this giant blob, which surely you've noticed a few times by now. This is going to be covered in climbing routes. And I've got one example right here. And it's still a work in progress. Uh, I want to make it easier for your hands to slip off, because right now it's uh, a little too stable. And then what you'll basically have to do is, as you're climbing, you have to make sure that you're not crossing your arms too much or lifting too much body weight on a hold like this, for instance. If you lift all your weight on this hold, I want your hand to slip right off. So that's a tricky balance to get. Uh, I had it pretty good before, I just overcorrected a bit too much before making the video uh, to make it more stable. And then there's some weird ones like that. But overall, quite fun. Uh, the route just keeps on going, and there's going to be at least four of these routes. But this isn't the only way you can climb these. So if we come up here, this is a new item that I've been working on that will come with the map, and the friction is cranked up. It's uh, using the maximum friction available in any scenario, and then it's also double the default friction. So if you're on a ledge, it'll hold on to that ledge quite well. And because this is modeled after an actual uh, climbing pick or a trainer pick, one that's not sharp, but rather used in like climbing gyms, for instance, uh, it's got that really good center of mass, so if you hook something with the top, you pulling on it is now going to hook the bottom against the wall, and the leverage is going to be pushing that tip into the hold, so these actually make very stable tools for climbing. You can actually, let's see if we can get it here, yeah, you can fall onto it and it'll still stop your fall, and really help you pull yourself up. But of course, these are more fun to use on the holds here, so let's go over there. So as you can see, pretty good grip on the holds, and then if you're pointing it towards the wall, very sturdy. I can kind of do pull-ups with one hand, it's not falling off the hold. Whoa. Now if I were to use a stronger avatar, this would be much easier, of course. Let's see how far we can get on these. Oh, not very far. And now you might be wondering, uh, what is this giant tunnel? Well, this giant tunnel circles all the way up to there. So what kind of inspired this tunnel, right, is the release of Mega's Car Pack on mod.io. And so this is a mod that adds cars, as you can imagine, of all varieties. My favorite of which is this road jack wagon. We're just waiting for it to spawn here. And he's put a lot of work into this mod. It has uh, proper drifting, especially on this car. The handling is quite good. The steering is good. It's one of the more, it's one of the highest quality car mods uh, to come out as of recent. So let's see, I'll drive up here as a quick example. Very fun to drive. So another big thing that I mentioned in the last devlog was that in the water, things are only floating based on their center point, center of mass, etc, right? And I've found a good way to remedy this. Yeah, I've been making these buoys that have platforms on them, and in this case I need to lift the platform up 
I'm probably gonna re-engineer the buoy so instead of this top part, it's like a platform lifted a meter up. It'll look kind of like a giant trampoline when it's done. Uh, but this will allow you to make your own structures in the pool that have these really good supports because as you can see, it doesn't tip all that much in the water and I can adjust it too. Adjust how much it tips. And this also solves another problem which is if you have a ton of stuff floating in the water here, your performance is gonna suck eventually. So anything that can keep you using like one anchor or two or three anchors in the water and then everything else above, uh, kind of keeping it dry, is actually going to allow you to get a lot more creative and do many more large sandbox projects inside of the map. And while we're here, I'm going to dive down because we've got some interesting modeling to show you down here. Let's actually switch to an avatar that can swim faster. So I've been working on fleshing out the bottom of the pool so it's not just this big empty space anymore. We got this big drain plug that is uh, for some future features. Well, as this kind of ominous architecture here. This is going to lead to a sort of arena area later on. Uh, I'm not sure if that'll be in a release or not. It depends on how easy it is to do. I'm kind of leaving anything that takes a while for the later versions. And I just happened to make this scaled about the size of uh, the tall avatar, just because it is a very easy one to swim in. And we've got all these rooms here that are lit by kind of ambient lighting from these art pieces. And just like above ground, let's see if I can swim down enough to see. It's just single windows that the light bounces out of and it cascades into the room. Another example here. actually swim up here to the other story and these rooms are all gonna have furniture and whatnot in them they're gonna have secrets it's all gonna be fleshed out later on I'm not sure if this will be fleshed out in the release or not because the main the main room is the main focus uh, but we'll see another example of one here and this is the first example we're gonna see we're gonna see more later of these holes in the ground and these are actually going to lead to a sort of maze later on uh, with unlockables inside and the whole focus of the maze is going to be that it's a very disorienting space uh, just a knot of tunnels under the water and at some point parts of the maze will be above water but mostly under the water another nice room here So we can swim back up here. Now, another thing that I've been doing is I've been getting a lot of practice with grips. And so that's making it so that the colliders on your object are able to be grabbed in specific ways that you're able to uh, adjust yourself. And what I'm doing with this is I'm trying to make it so that the whole goal, the whole map is consistently gripped out. So if you see something and you're like, well, I should be able to grab that. Well, guess what? You can. All right, so that's kind of the current state of things. And now I'm just going to talk about what's next for the map, basically, uh, as we work towards the main release. So one of the big things is I'm going to be keep, keep building off the buoy system here. And I'm going to create things like inflatable pool toys. And you'll be able to ride these down the slides as well as sit on them on top of the water. And they're going to stay upright, basically. Uh, obviously, I've got to make the aforementioned zip lines and pulleys and diving boards and all that stuff, throw some puzzles in there. And then I'm also going to start working on uh, ventilation and pipes and stuff, just to kind of break up the really, really empty spaces. And I'm going to try and make it so that there's secret areas hidden within those as well. So really a lot of stuff that you can kind of climb on and climb into and find stuff in. Uh, so that's going to be a pretty big focus uh, in of itself. Uh, obviously making more climbing routes is another big one and then there's a lot of technical stuff so one of the biggest technical things I have to do is I have to do the collision for the map and if you're not familiar with how the collision works you might be like well it's working isn't it and uh, the short answer is sort of so the default kind of unity collision that we have on most things here is called a mesh collider where basically the surface is perfectly 
um, copied by the collider. So if you see, you know, a curved surface and you touch it, it's also going to collide as if it's curved. Uh, but the issue with these is these mesh colliders are infinitely thin. So what happens if, is if you have a small item like a magazine or casings from your gun or whatnot, they'll actually fall through the floor if they hit it hard enough or through a wall or wherever. And that's especially annoying on here. Let me show you why. So the issue with this map is that if you have these mesh colliders, and I'm just getting a gun to show you this. If you have these mesh colliders, instead of building your own collision, which takes a while, the bullet casings falling through the floor are going to hit the water zones that I have under the map. Like so. And in some cases, this is just whatever, a brief annoyance. But in a map like this, where everything in the water has to be calculated to float, uh, that sucks away performance pretty quickly once you have a whole bunch of magazines and casings and everything, just or even just debris from destructible props in the water, when it should just be on the floor in the first place, where it can pause the physics after it rests for a while. Uh, so that's one of the big things that I've got to work on still. And then of course, other things like I was talking about, making it so that there's boosters of some kind on the slide. And uh, yeah, just a whole bunch of activities and settings and whatnot. Um, but yeah, as far as like pool toys goes, or gadgets, another one is gadgets. Um, I just want to have a whole ton of items that you can use for sandbox building and playing around and for fighting enemies, and for fighting and playing with your friends if you have the multiplayer mod installed, so... That's all quite a lot of little things, but they're also things that I can make uh, quite quickly in the editor, so... Yeah, I think that's just about it for all of the recent additions, changes, and upcoming stuff, so keep your eyes out on the channel for more updates. They are going to become more frequent. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.